have you ever wondered what would happen to your putter if you made a grip change? And we all know the significance of picking the correct grip with your other 13 golf clubs, but will it have the same impact on your putter? And to keep things simple, today we're just gonna be focusing on the size of the grip and we're gonna be running that test to the nth degree. And we had four popular grips that we're gonna test today. And I'm actually curious to see how it affects my stroke and my ability to square that face up. And to help us with this analysis is our very own Andrew. So Andrew, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So Andrew's been fitting golf clubs for the better part of three and a half, four years with this. And this is where he started. So what better person to help me complete this testing than somebody that's smarter than me when it comes to Quintic. So guys, without further delay, let's jump in. So before we get too deep, I do want to thank Michael from Texas with sending in the question because this is what really gave me the thought to begin with because I too am really curious and wanting to know what will happen because I've been thinking about changing the grip on my putter and just really wasn't for sure if it's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. So Andrew, um, help us understand what's the current specs of my gamer? Yeah, so you're rocking the ER11 face balance, uh, 32 and a half inches at F0 swing weight. As far as the grip goes, we are rocking the uh, corded pro-only Red Star from Golf Pride. And I'll hand All right. to you. And then how are we able to keep the swing weight integrity as we change grips? Because I think these grips will vary in weight. Yeah, so we got a, we got a counterweight set up to influence the swing weight so that if one gets too heavy, uh, or gets too head heavy as far as swing weight, we can draw that back with those counterweights. Okay, cool. So for today's test, uh, we're going to be just really the only effect is just going to be the size of the grip. Yeah. Swing weight length won't change whatsoever. So this will really just be a great, great test. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, roll a couple with this smallest grip first and see what happens. <laughs> Well, all four of those appear to roll a little true. If anything, I would say that maybe I'm closing the face just a touch. Seems like it's hovering that yellow, the left yellow line. Um, and it definitely is a little smaller than that of what I've been playing for the last 10 to 15 years. But what's the numbers tell us? Yeah, so the first one sat just a little bit open. And then after that, they were all pretty shut from about three quarters of a degree to about a degree and a quarter it did just kind of support what I just felt, right? It felt like I was just closing to maybe just a hair too much. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, well, the next grip we have is uh, the Super Stroke grip. Um, and I would probably argue to say it's probably our best selling Super Stroke. It's the pistol style, but it's the 2.0. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's swap that out and let's see what that does. So what grip do we have on for test two? Yeah, so we're rocking the Super Stroke Pistol 2.0. Um, a little bit larger than that of the red star that you just wrapped up hitting. Yeah, I would tell you just right out the gate. It seems like I got more space, more real estate for the hands. This feels better. Um, never really been a fan of like the traditional Scotty style grips, the really thin tour style. Um, this here really just feels better to me. I'm really kind of curious to see if it's any big of a difference. So let's test it. Uh, call me crazy, Andrew, I swear. I think this one, I was almost leaving the face maybe a hair open, um, and it felt good, but uh, maybe just struggling with closing it a little bit with this one. Uh, most definitely. So this was by far just a massive, or the biggest jump that we've seen up to this point. Uh, degree and a quarter open, degree and a half open, degree and a half open, and then the last one you got back down to being just three tenths of a degree open. So no doubt you were riding that that right uh, that right side line the entire time up until that last one where you were able to square it up a little bit more. You took about a two and a half degree jump from the red star to the super stroke. I want to take this moment to really quickly call out something because there's a big difference when we're in here 
talking about degrees versus where we are when we're fitting all the other clubs. Um, here, one to two degrees really has a profound impact. I think there was a metric or something is like if your face is open or closed one degree at impact, I mean, you miss a putt at like 12 feet or 15 feet. Yeah. Um, and so it's just like you know, the margin of error, you know, is not as large as it is with, say, your driver. Right. Yeah. I mean, you get you get 40 yards across the fairway to really work with with a driver where the cup is, you know, nowhere near that. So your margin of error is so, so, so small that something like that can be the difference between you doing what you did with the first and pulling it down the left-hand side and doing what you did with the second and pulling it down the right hand. Let's, uh, let's move on to test three. Now this grip is a little different from the other ones because it's almost a combination of two different styles of grips. So what do we got on this one? We're rocking the Lampkin Pistol Claw. All right. So almost like a traditional pistol in the top hand and uh, square, flat in the bottom hand. Very, very unique. Now that one definitely felt better. I don't think they was all online but i think it was probably more online than everything else we tried we're really curious to see what the numbers show on this one wasn't as bad as some of the other ones where we saw it super open but what i did see was a little bit of inconsistency as we worked from right to left first one was actually pretty square your face or your path excuse me is just a little end out second one you shut down it was like two degree shut um so it seemed like it took you a second to kind of get comfortable with this but even then we can see your dispersion down there where you got the you got the ball on the right side of the cup and then they just continue to work left so, all right. so maybe not for you so you know you're not liking this grip at all not for you no. okay all right um what do you think it was more you think it was more just the bottom hand or the top hand probably lean closer to the bottom hand um bottom hand's going to play a little bit more of a role as far as squaring up the face no different than it does when you are swinging driver through wedge um, that lead hand's going to continue to do its thing, but the, the, that bottom hand's going to be used to make adjustments, especially if you feel like you're leaving the face open, you're going to have that subconscious reaction to try to square it up. For you, I think you were over squaring it to the point where you were just shutting it down. All right, so if we was just to kind of summarize, you know, what we've seen first. First grip, we was always pulling shut or mm -hmm. closing it. Second grip, we was missing to the right. Yep. This one was kind of like both right and left? In between. All right. In between. All right. All right, well, let's, uh, we got one more grip to try. So fourth and final grip, Andrew. This one is a relatively new addition to the studio. When we was down at the PGA show, uh, stopped by the Two Thumbs booth, took a look at her products, was really intrigued about the different styles of grip because it's something that we haven't had in our studio quite like this. Um, so what's up with this grip? Yeah, so this is the Two Thumb. This is the OG light in the 43. Um, Ooh. I'd say initially it's it's giving me like flat cap uh, vibe. You know what? I agree with you. It definitely it's, you know, one, it's very, very flat and almost unlike the Lampkin where the bottom was just uh, flat and it was a traditional uh, tour style and the pistol and the um, top hand. This one's flat through and through and we'll throw an image up for you guys to kind of take a look at this one. But uh, yeah, this one's really, really unique. So uh, yeah, let's give this one a run and see what happens. And I will also say this is the largest grip of all of them too. Not even close. Probably, yeah. the, uh, probably the biggest one on here. Outside of that last one, the first three felt really good. Um, I will say I kind of like this style for me. Um, I'm kind of like the finger pointing down the grips with both hands and I really kind of like to lock my wrist in and uh, the sides of these really allows me to have a good place for those fingers to rest. Feels really, really comfortable, but what do we see from the data perspective? I think we found your grip. Are you serious? Yes. So let's take a look. Yeah, so no doubt we can take a look at 
all the other ones that we've hit up to this point, and then we can take a look and we can see that your face has been square, at least within, within a, a marginal range, uh, whether if it was just a touch close or a touch open, you do a really good job of getting that face really close to square, where the other ones we can see where you, you kind of flip flop back and forth between being too shut and square, wide open, and then being square and then flipping back and forth to being shut again. Um, yeah, this looked really, really, really good. I was sitting there and I was holding that thought in the back of my mind. I was like, these numbers are looking really solid. I think we might have found something here. I mean, it felt great. And once again, and maybe it's just because, you know, those two fingers pointing down the shaft and having the size of that grip really lock that in. Um, but it almost was like auto magic. You know, I didn't really have to think about it. And I guess the other way to you know, maybe you can validate is it almost put my hands working in unison and not fighting against one another. I mean, does that make any sense? Yeah, I mean that's that's the exact way that you know i've learned to putt and you know i picked it up from you it was kind of a day one install for us where when we were talking about putting you talked about the grip that you like and i kind of replicated that and i've tried to rock it since and i put this in my hands right before we started taking a look at this and it felt like it was something that was conforming to my grip also knowing that i'm not too far off from yours so i would say that you know as far as your grip goes it had to have felt somewhat comfortable or at least, you know, trustworthy that you had a nice place to put it and you knew you were going to putt well and the data just spoke for itself. Well, data doesn't lie, Andrew. I mean, it's pretty profound results. And when we're talking inches and degrees with the putter, this grip did the best for me. And I, I definitely think I found my new grip and hell, I might even, you know, go as far to make this statement. Um, I wasn't really looking to see that big of a difference. I mean, I didn't think the grip really mattered, but I think this really just saved me like $350 and buying a brand new putter. Um, what do you see when our customers come in through the studio? How much are you actually, you know, finding that it is the wrong style of putter versus just a $35 grip change? Yeah, well, for people who are just looking for something brand new, um, something to, you know, just, try anything different than, you know, I'll go through and I'll take a look at a different putter. But for guys that are really trying to chase that low score and they really love this putter, it just maybe needs a little more work, then that's where we take a look at that putter grip and we see what we can really do to drive that putter home, make it the leading candidate, and at the end of the day, make it the uh, favorite club in the bag because it's going to be the most important club in the bag. I mean, the difference between shooting 35, 36 putts in a round and, you know, low 30s, high 20s, I mean, uh, if I can keep the ball more on line, make more putts, then, you know, a $35 change, I'll welcome that any day of the week. Um, so, guys, we truly hope you found value with the information we shared with you today and at least the test that we performed. Um, this was pretty eye-opening for me, you know, small versus large. And I will tell you, of all the four grips I put in my hands, this was the one that I probably would have bet I would have done the worst with. But uh, you know what? You know, feels versus reels, data doesn't lie. Guys, the only way you're going to know is go test this for yourself. So seek out a putter fitter. And the two things they really need is they need to be able to interchange the grips, you know, take the grips on and off, try different styles of grips, different shapes. That's exactly what we've done today. And then make sure that when they do so, they have the ability to offset the swing weight implication because different grips will have different weights and that can throw your timing off and it could be a good thing but it could be a bad thing so to keep everything simple try to protect that swing weight so that way the only influence is the size of the grip so guys until next week don't forget to take a look at one of these videos over here because there just might be some key nuggets there that can help you on your golfing journey but uh guys uh you know if you did enjoy this and you would like to see more content like this or you'd like to see more content like this in the future then uh just let us know in the remarks below so andrew thanks for joining us until next time thanks for watching